to grade the discussion forums. We go to the course syllabus and we look at the discussion forum guidelines. And here are the discussion forum guidelines for this particular course. As we discussed previously, this right here, this 20 point rubric is universal for all courses. However, there may be some modifications based on the course. For example, the English courses and other courses that are heavy into writing and grammar and punctuation, theirs are going to look a little different because, well, it's a special case. And also, there may be a fifth line item down here that is course specific. So if there are just the one, two, three, four, then the, the, the discussion forum is worth 20 points. So five times four is 20. If there is another line item, there would be five line items times five points a piece. That means that it's worth 25 points. And this is what you do. You take a look at the rubric, and you're going to measure this against what they have done. Engagement. How many times did they, or this one is, responded to the question three or more days after? So this is when. When. Did they do it by Wednesday or Friday, depending? On the day or before the day? Two days or three days or more? Interaction responded to the question of one other student, question of two other students, question of three other students, posted a minimum of one response, two responses, three responses, and the relevance also. So when you're counting the responses, you take a look at posting responses such as I agree or I don't know or not acceptable. Take a look at the guidelines. So let's say for example a student responded to the question before the day open, that's five points responded to two other students, that's four points, five and four is nine, posted response over two days, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and are very relevant. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen points for this student. But how do you find out? How do you find out? So this is what you do. Using whatever way works best for you, you go in and you look. One of the ways that you can do it is by going to participants. This is only one way. You use the way that works best for you. Participants, and we're going to look at Marsha and activity reports. You can see that she made four posts to the discussion forum and three posts to strengths and weaknesses. And we can look at those forum posts. And you really can't tell by looking at this. But you can see that she did post on Wednesday, and this is her original post. And this one, I can tell by the languages that she's responding to someone else. And there's another responding to someone else. So you go ahead and you you count. You count how many and then you use the discussion forum guidelines. You can print it or you can have two windows open at the same time. Whatever works best for you. You can also just go into the discussion forum strengths and weaknesses of online learning because this is the one we're grading and we count. You can also look at it this way in threaded form and we look up Here's Marsha is responding to Wednesday. And here's Marsha responding to Joe, who's responding to Hik Hikaru. And here is Marsha Brady. You can tell it's at the top or all the way to the left. This is her response. So she responded on one day, on Friday, or excuse me, on Wednesday to two other people. So let's see. She responded. I read her thing and it does meet the, the five and two other people. So let's go back over here to the grade book. Actually let's go to the syllabus and discussion forum guidelines. And she did respond to the question the day the discussion opened. That's five. Respond, responded to two other students. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Posted a minimum of one response in one day. 
she posted two, so that's two points. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and it was relevant and prompt and for uh, dis prompted further discussion. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. She received sixteen points. So now we can go into the grade book, and you'll want to do all of these at once too. You don't want to go back and forth and back and forth. You'll find a routine that works best for you. Come to the gra grades. And we need to find the strengths and weaknesses discussion forum. Turn editing on. There it is. Hmm. Control minus. There we go. Now we can see it. Marsha Brady over here. We have to have the editing turned on. There's Marsha Brady. She received 17 points. And if I wanted to, I can add comments here with the feedback and explain why if you wanted to. And you would do the same thing for all the other students. You would grade them using the, the key, the grading rubric for discussion forums, and then you would just go in and type them all in. And when you're done, you just update, and we have, we see that Marshall Brady received 17 points. I turn editing off, and it's still there, 17 points for Marsha. You would use the same technique and routine to input grades manually for things such as you have a, another online test or something and it doesn't automatically update in Moodle, then you would go in and turn editing on, go to that particular grade, grading item, and then manually type in the grades and then update down at the bottom and that's all there is to it. When you are grading reports, always use the rubric. Always use the rubric. And we have a report down here. The teaching philosophy report. There are a couple different ways that you can access the uploaded reports. You can do it within the gradebook by clicking the item, or you can just click on the activity on the main page. And see up here, view six submitted assignments. I click on that, and here they are. A couple of them have already been graded. A couple of them have not. Here is how you access it by clicking the Marsha, Brady Marsha Teaching Doc. And this is why it's so important to have naming protocols because when you click on it, you can open it, you can save it. What if they didn't put their name on? the actual document itself and you have it open and you don't remember whose it is. So this is why it's important to have them name it. And you open the document, you use the grading rubric, whatever it may be, and wherever it is, if you can't find it, contact the instructional designer, and you use the grading rubric to grade the paper, close, or if you wanted to save it, you can also save it, and then you click, click on Grade. This one's for Marsha. You can up here, this little pull-down menu, this is where you put the grade. And I did Marsha's thing, and she did a very good job. She got a 23. And you type in, very nice work. I really enjoyed reading your report or whatever it is your feedback that you wanted. You send notification email if you want. You can save and show next or next because you have more than one that you're going to do. We're going to save and show next. This is Laverne's and I've already looked at it and if I wanted to remind myself I would just click on that and I can open it or save it but I'm going to cancel. But I did remember and she received a 22 using the grading rubric. I calculated that she received a 22 and you can type in whatever 
feedback that you wanted. You can save changes and that will take you out. So see that she received and you can look at the comments. They are each going to receive an email. So you can go ahead and that's how you do it. And when you're done, just go back to your main page. And that's all there is to that. So remember, use your rubrics and the grade book with manual. You need to have it on editing and be in editing mode and lots of feedback, positive language, encouraging language. And that's the great book.